else with Bailey. I'm Bailey and I'm a clairvoyant psychic medium and spiritual healer based in New Zealand. Welcome. So today's video is going to be on why do some people need a victim? And I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, and how this consciously happens and how people consciously choose to disempower other people and how it's very, very normalized. And also I'm going to talk about when we experience a lot of these types of, these types of experiences around um, disheartening individuals and being in a society and a consciousness that doesn't really honor the soul and how spiritual depression um, can happen and very, very easily, especially if you are around a lot of individuals who keep enforcing their will upon you. And then I'm also going to talk about how to remove that disempowerment energy out of your energy body. Because what happens um, with this victim perpetrator consciousness, that is what I call old world planetary consciousness, is there is an addiction and a need to bring down and pull down other people to make yourself feel better. This is a very, very limited state of consciousness. It is not spiritually conducive and it is very, very juvenile. It is not a healthy, self-autonomous, empowering way to be in the earthly realm. It is a very, very what I call, as why there's a lot of, I've been talking about, when I say I was on my walks, when I said medieval madness, um... And a lot of medieval consciousness and warlord energies and civil wars and whatnot coming back up in the collective consciousness. But here on this channel, I talk a lot about leaving, conquer and divide and choosing other things. And we do have free will and there's a lot of stuff and energies opening up in the cosmos and we can sort of exit out <laughs> of what the mainstream consciousness is going through and creates something new outside of that realm. So the reason why some people consciously need a victim is most likely because at some stage in their life they've been a victim. Um, and also they're probably in a very, very limited state of traumatized consciousness. There isn't um, a will or a want to change out of that consciousness. Or what routinely happens is you can just sort of have a lot of experiences and not know when someone's in a limited state or a spiritual immaturity and not know that there's a better way of operating. But also I'm very discerning with this and that I allow other people to experience this, but I don't need to be a part of it. So I'm very discerning because there are many, many different things playing out in this earthly realm. You have free will, other people have free will. And you need to decide for yourself about what you're aligning with um, very consciously. So, yeah, what I say, why do some people need a victim? Yeah, so as I said, it's a limited state of consciousness. That when someone purposely and consciously needs you, this is the trick here, when someone needs you to be disempowered or in a victimized state so they can feel better, that is, well, depending on, on the insidious of it, it can be abusive. But what happens is this person is enforcing energy and their will upon you to get you to stay in a disempowered state so that they are benefiting energetically. But then this could also play out with land, money, finances, jobs, career. It can happen in all walks of life. But I'm going to talk about it from an energetic perspective. So say you are, some of us incarnate with a lot more light and a lot more confidence. And when you incarnate with a higher, more open awareness, you are most likely not operating victim perpetrator consciousness and you do not seek to pull others down or take from others. So there's, there's many different consciousnesses sort of happening on the earth at the moment. And it's very, it's very interesting. Um, and, we, and we're all viewing things so differently. You know, we're all unique and one-of-a-kind individuals. So, um, and you've got to be careful with where other people are at and where they're coming from 
and if you're going to allow that energy into your life and into your energy field. Because what I've seen with people who need a victim is that they will interfere on your life. You could have triggered it doesn't matter what you trigger to them. You could you could just be living your life. You could be confident. You could be onto it. You could be empowered. Maybe you're living out your life path. Maybe you're really enjoying yourself. Maybe you're in a happy marriage or relationship. Maybe you're making some great art. Maybe your business is going really well. It does. If, if someone's in and needs someone or is feeling triggered, I think the, the triggered, triggered by you and they need you disempowered, it's like the switch that happens and they will consciously that like, I need that person to get below me and they'll come and almost into your energy field or they'll say a mean comment and so you know when someone says a mean comment and you can just shrink like that and be like oh and you can feel hurt and upset because what's happened with that um, conscious energy transaction or conversation or interaction that you had with that individual is that their energy, their need to dominate you, to make you feel victimized, has come into your energy field and pushed you down. And it is very easy to, rem and, you know, with people like that, you can either put a boundary up or discern and just walk away. A lot of people like that are just not worth your time and energy. You're going to get caught up in a conflict or further exonerate and open yourself up to more negativity and more disempowerment. A lot of people who need someone in a victimized state to make themselves feel better are not empowered and they're most likely not looking to change. Um, and they do not have the tools or the spiritual capabilities in their consciousness to understand what's going on. And um, with that victimized state, you've been energetically pushed down by this person's will or want and you've also allowed it energetically. And so I talk a lot about energy transference and interactions with people we have all the time and why you need discernment with energy and if it's worth your time and how is this. Because once you have people like that enter into your life over long term, if it's business contracts, relationships, family dynamics, they can literally interfere and just sort of weasel their way in to all aspects of your life. Once they realize that they have a little bit of power over you, they will come in and try it again because it will make them feel better. They see you having a good time or whatever it is and they come in, say a nasty comment, yell at you, whatever it is, and um, they feel better and they walk off. And then you're left feeling disempowered and victimized by... And I've definitely seen, I had a very interesting um, situation happen to me where I did not know that people consciously were nasty to purposely make themselves feel better and then to purposely make someone else feel victimized. So that's called bullying. And it's very normalized. And I said this to someone, you know, it's, it's very bizarre that adult bullying is um, acceptable in today's modern day world. And also I think with the advent of social media and how people are using it, is very juvenile, sitting behind a keyboard, writing a nasty comment, or it is very, you gonna make yourself just very unclassy, if you will. Uh, but, um, I guess I'm just how we're using social media, and, and yeah, anyway. Um, with the energy transference that happens with these situations that you can, you can play with a family member, it can play out in society, it can play out with this one you don't really know, but they're being triggered by you. It's like, say if you're standing up and talking, and then someone in the audience has to yell out a rude and nasty comment because they're feeling insecure. And then they, the energy pulls you down and makes you feel out. The way to combat that and to not allow someone to put you in a victimized state is to either push the energy back, no thank you, I'm not going to be victimized, or um, wait and then, in, like, you need to check your energy body and then consciously bring up this person's energy or whatever was just transferred into your aura to dim your light and your confidence, pretty much. And then push it back out to that person. So I'll give you an example of when I was um, working with someone. Um, 
and, and there's all these situations that can happen where this victim perpetrator thing plays out and it's actually quite annoying and um, it's almost like people can't help themselves sometimes when they're around confident people or people really living their lives because they feel they're somehow trapped so they need to victimize someone else and it just shocked me because I was having um, an experience and then I spur around to have no, 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 Bailey, this person is doing this on purpose. And I thought it was subconscious, this person doesn't know what they're doing, but the spirit realms have said, no, Bailey, this person is consciously trying to victimize you. And they're trying to put me in a financial state, in a living state, in, 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 in this whole state that I couldn't get out of. And this person needed me victimized to make themselves feel better and to have a purpose in life. So it's very important that if you are around individuals like that, that you remove the energy out of your energy field if you and just watch the feelings that happen when someone shh at you and how you feel and then no thank you, I'm returning this energy to this person, this is not my responsibility, I am not a victim and this person cannot just come and shh on into my energy like that and you know we can't control what other people are doing and we can't, we're not responsible for what other people are doing with their free will. And um, it's also, yeah, just so important to remember that you may not, you probably didn't do anything in the first place to deserve it. This person needs you disempowered to feel better. They don't know how to make themselves feel empowered from within. So they go out externally and try and gain that power from other people. So people do this consciously, and this is why I'm very, very aware of the collective consciousness at the moment and this medieval warlord energy that's coming up, uh, because when people are very heightened in that disempowerment energy, um, quite routinely they will need to consciously pull down a lot of people into victimhood to make themselves feel higher up. But the thing is, that, that feeling doesn't last for long until they see another person who's doing better than them and they have to go and disempower someone else. So you've got to be very careful with the company you keep and um, also um, the people you're allowing in your life and in your energy. Sometimes we are in living environments or job environments or career environments where we can't leave them and so it's important to have energetic tools um, with firm spiritual firmness and say, no thank you, I'm returning that energy back to that person, I'm not victimized. This isn't my energy. You can go elsewhere. Even if you just close your eyes and say it very clearly, I remove this person's energy out. So if you don't, we can't take ownership or responsibility for someone else, but we can take ownership and responsibility for our own energy and what we're allowing into it. And sometimes people are going to come onto you, but you can remove that energy out so they do not have a say in how you are feeling and what you are doing in the earthly realm. So what was the example I was going to give? Um, yeah, so it's just so important to remember that your energy is your energy and no one should be trying to victimize you just to make themselves feel better. And you do have ways around that of not allowing that consciousness or energy into your energy field. But you've got to be mindful. If you, if you have a few, you're probably going to have a few experiences, but just be mindful how you feel. When this person talks to you, that's your aura, that's your auric boundary, what's just entered into your energy field to make you feel icky. Is it yours or do you need to send it back to that person? So I was working with someone and there he had been through um, a really, really disempowering experience with another female. And once we had sort of reclaimed back all this power and whatnot, and um, move through all the experiences and the emotions and the energies. Um, it was very important that, and we could feel this person's embarrassment coming back in or what, or this females wanting to project her own embarrassment at being uh, caught out or whatever it was or not having her plan of manipulation go the way she wanted it. So this is why I talk about these things because there's there's many different realms of consciousness playing out and you need to have the tools and the common sense and the backbone to navigate said individuals and to kick them out of your life. Because people in victim perpetrator consciousness or who are largely unconscious of the inner but are consciously 
bullying and victimizing other people, you need to have the energy tools to clear that out and say no. And we could feel this person's embarrassment coming back in and trying to um, say, I'm not embarrassed, it was someone else who did that. You know, there's that, you know, that whole projection thing where people try and disown their own free will choices of what they've chosen to create and blame it on someone else. Don't ever, ever take on someone else's blame and shame. Send it back to that person to deal with. You should not have to deal with someone else's energy of their own actions. So with um, victim perpetrator, that you know that they need to have a victim. Um, usually, with high levels of projection and energy transference, there'll be a lot of twisting of the story. But don't let people get away with it. If you know for sure this person was, if the person was knows what they were doing, because we do, we do know what we're doing. Um, it's very important that you hold that person energetically accountable and you don't let them try and be like, no, it's your fault why I acted like that. I'm blaming it on you as to why I was yelling at you. I'm blaming it on you as to why I can't get my finances online. I'm blaming it on, it on you as to why this relationship isn't working. That's not okay. Turn back the energy onto them and say, no. So if you do not have the ability to say no to victim people who need a victim, if you don't have the ability to say no to people who are projecting onto you, this is when high levels of spiritual depression start to set in because your energy body is going to get absolutely, and your aura is going to get absolutely bombed with other people's emotions and wants and needs for your life. And um, especially, I think, it's very common that other people don't want you to be happy. It's very common that other people maybe want your life. Maybe other people are not focusing on themselves um, as a state of immaturity and not taking full accountability and responsibility for your life and where you're guiding yourself. And what can happen with a lot of us is a spiritual depression can set in because we're not living life on our terms. Instead, we're sort of taken on all these people around us who are being dominating or rude or deceitful or they have a hidden agenda or they have tried to really, especially if you've been in long-term environments like family dynamics or career rooms, whatever it is, you can take on other people's projections into your energy body and create a career that is just not who you are. And then a spiritual depression and unfulfillment sets in and it's like you start living life on this grey scale. There's no creativity, there's no colour, there's no enjoyment. Or you're trying to create a business of an of a outdated concept that's not working for you as a person. And someone said, no, business is this way and this way only. This has happened to me a lot. When you start a business, you're doing it on your terms. And of course you're going to make mistakes. And of course you're not going to get it right the first time because you're building something from scratch. So you're learning as you go. And that's the whole point of business. Um, you're not meant to have everything in line all the time. Like I honestly feel business is a journey um, when you start one. It's just it's not as simple as just starting a course. There's so much more that goes into building that course or putting that module together behind the scenes. And, and it's just, um, yeah, fulfillment is a really important Spiritual depression sets them when we're not fulfilled in the soul. Always sort of gone off of everyone else's wants and needs, how life should be. Collective consciousness says this, we have to do that. And we're not really listening to our soul and our actual desires. Like, for example, um, as a woman, you're told that you have to be X, Y, Z. But what happens if you don't like wearing dresses? For me, I love dresses, but... Maybe for other women, it is combat boots and, and, you know, dresses and jackets. Or it is something else that makes them feel really, really great um, in the feminine spirit. But, um, and spiritual depression happens when you're not really taking full accountability and responsibility, I think, for your actions in your life and where you're guiding yourself. And it's like someone else is in the driver's seat. So what happens with victimization or... People who project um, and need you to be disempowered into your energy field over a long period of time, you're going to lose your je ne sais quoi and your your drive and your life force to create the life that you want. And that's why boundaries is so important because 
whose energy and thoughts and feelings are you allowed into your energy field and who's governing and dictating your life and your soul. So um, it's very interesting. Okay, so I talked about victimhood, how that happens, why you shouldn't allow it, people who consciously do it, and then spiritual depression. Spiritual depression can happen because you've got entities in your aura. It could be something so simple. It could be your dad's energy telling you in your ear, you know, business is like this and this way only. I know for myself, I had a lot of overlays from old world masculine and, and having to be a business, having to be one way and one way only. I'm an intuitive creative woman. Business is going to be different for me. <laughs> um, I'm not going to play by the rules of an old consciousness that doesn't suit me and neither should you. So, um, yeah, it's very important that in order to move out of spiritual depression and gain back your sense of power and in chargedness, um, that you do know how to say no and remove energies from your energy field and say no to victimhood and be like, you know what? No, you're not going to be putting me into a state of victimhood. You need to deal with your own feelings and you need to go away. Um, because your energy field and your life and your free will is not and should not be governed by someone else. It should be governed by you. And you're not responsible for what someone else is choosing to do. That's on them and you should not take it on either. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I hope that was helpful. And remember that the Q&A will be beginning on the 11th of April. You can send in questions from creativity, art, boundaries, psychic phenomena, dream times. I think there's a lot of people having some weird dreams. I have some intense dreams lately. Um, and if you want to understand the dream time, if you want to um, know the difference between naughty spirits and your dreams and whatnot, if you're having experiences with boundaries or discernment and whatnot or you want to know more about business or the soul or the cosmos or what's going on right now with masculine and feminine send in your questions I, as i see it as someone else is feeling it we're most likely a big bunch of us is also feeling it so there are no wrong questions okay thank you so much for watching and i hope that was helpful